Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Melanie. This is Adventures in Hostess Bill, and this is episode 11 of the Vintage Magazine Project and episode 3 of the March 1969 iMagazine. And today's article is Can You Do This? Yoga Step by Step. The first thing I think when I look at that girl is no. No, I probably can't. So you should know that if you are looking for a yoga video, go find a different one. If you are looking to, by comparison, feel monumentally better about your practice and also learn about a fascinating lady yoga teacher you've probably never heard of, stick with me, kid, and click like and subscribe at the same time. So I am just getting started with their warm-up, which they said mostly involves pressing on yourself and doing some rubbing. And there is definitely a fad for yoga and meditation and sitar music and all of that stuff happening at this point. People are looking to expand their minds and their consciousness and all of that sort of stuff. The pictures kind of indicate that that's what we're doing and they definitely have that sort of psychedelic feel. But then the article, like right here on the cover, it says, yoga for a figure fantastic, ready for beach and boys. Fat people get thin. Thin people who do it develop beautiful muscles and curves. It makes you peppy and frighteningly healthy. And they say that the basic steps that they are giving you to follow here make up the first course in physical culture taught by the spiritual regeneration movement. I feel like you regular watchers spend a lot of time watching me roll on the floor. The spiritual regeneration movement was founded in the late 1950s by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He is the guy that the Beatles famously went to India and studied with him at his ashram. And sometimes people say like, oh, the Beatles brought, you know, Indian culture to the West. No, they didn't. It had already been here. But I do think it would be sort of hard to overstate just how much they helped popularize it, just by being interested in it. And then people are like, oh, the Beatles like it? We must like it too. Okay, it's time for my first actual pose. It is just sitting on your knees, which, oh. The Beatles were with the Maharishi learning specifically transcendental meditation. That's what he was teaching them. The guy that they say introduced the Beatles to the yoga is this guy, the Swami Vishnu Devananda. And I don't know that the Beatles ever studied with him, but in 1965, they're in the Bahamas shooting the movie Help, and they meet him and he's like, you should read my book. And they're like, okay. But Vishnu Devananda does teach a lot of people yoga and he has ashrams not only in the Bahamas, but in India and in Canada, and it's at his ashram outside of Montreal, I believe, where he teaches Marcia Moore. This next one is called Viparati Karani Asana, and they call it the reversing pose, and it is my beginner's version of the shoulder stand. So, <laughs> let's see if this is a thing I can do. There are my toes. So Marcia Moore is born in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1927, I believe. Her father is the founder of the Sheraton Hotel chain. So they had some money. And her mom is a author, writer, illustrator, and uh, esotericist. Her older brother, by the way, she's got two brothers, but one of her brothers, Robin Moore, is the guy that writes the Green Berets. And he also writes The French Connection, which gets made into a movie with uh, Gene Hackman and sexy, sexy Roy Scheider. So she gets married at like 19 to this guy named Simon's Roof. And he's an aspiring writer as well. And they have three kids like immediately. And then sometime in the mid-50s, they just like take off for India for three years. Uh, because you can do that when you're very rich. And they study Hinduism and 
Eastern esotericism and that kind of thing. Okay, next up is Janusirasana, head knee pose. Okay, so they come back from India and she decides to go finish her schooling and she's going to Radcliffe and her thesis paper is on astrology. It's called Astrology Today, a Socio-Psychological Survey. And she gets out of college and then basically that's what she does. She becomes what she calls an astrological consultant. And she also is working with people on regressing to past lives. She's really into reincarnation and she's got this theory that she calls hypersentience. And at some point in here also she loses the husband. There's another husband around here too that I doesn't last very long, but at some point she ends up in Canada studying yoga from Vishnu Devananda. And after she's done with that, like she gives him a bunch of money to build another ashram because he is really good at getting rich women to give him money to build stuff. Like that's how we got the place in the Bahamas. But then she goes back to Concord which is where they're living now in Massachusetts. And she starts teaching yoga there. Okay, now I'm in plow, which feels not super different than the, the baby shoulder stand, except for that my arms are down here and my feet are supposed to be touching the floor. They're not. So she's teaching yoga and somehow this guy, Jess Stearns, gets word of her. And he is this sort of sensationalist, journalist author and he's got books out about the drug scene and about sex workers and about homosexuals and he decides he's going to do a book about this yoga and re reincarnation stuff so he goes out and he studies with Marcia Moore for I think 100 days and at the end of it he feels way better so he's like this is great. But he writes this book called Yoga, Youth and Reincarnation and it's a pretty big hit. It's a lot of people's first introduction to any of these things at all. And Marcia is the model in all of the pictures. Oof. Okay, so Marcia looks a lot better doing yoga than I do. She's, she's this sort of tiny little pixie. She's got this dark, dark hair and this pale skin, and she looks this little wisp, but she can hold these amazing poses. And also, she's apparently just incredibly charismatic. She's very bright. She's very interested in things. She's like, she's into this and she's into that and she's all over the place. So this book comes out and she suddenly gets a certain level of fame that allows her to start writing books too. Now at this point, Marcia is on husband number three, who's this guy named Mark Douglas. And they write a lot of these books together. So she follows up Jess Stern's Yoga Youth and Reincarnation with her own books. Yoga, Sex, and Diet. There's one that's Reincarnation, The Path to Immortality. And there's a bunch of them about astrology. There's one on the hypersentience. And she's kicking them out left and right. It's right at the moment when everybody in the country is suddenly now into all of this Eastern mysticism and yoga. And, you know, if you've got the Maharishi Mahesh yogi and, and, you know, all the people that are working with the Beatles for all the hippies, Marcia Moore is sort of the yoga teacher for the upper middle class 40-something white ladies. Okay, now I'm about to go into cobra pose, which is called something else in Sanskrit, Bugan Bujaka. Nope. So like I said, we're at this point now where suddenly all of this Indian stuff is super trendy. All that stuff gets muddied up with this like mind expansion. Timothy Leary, Ram Das, drugs and sex and everything. But there are other people who don't think it goes along. And in fact, the Beatles, even when they go start learning TM, it's partly to not be doing LSD as much. And Marcia's not really into them either. She has tried them. She admits that she tried LSD and she tried mescaline and hash, but they never really gave her the experience that she wanted. She, she is looking to expand her mind and have this altered consciousness, but she feels like she's not getting it from drugs the way that she would have wanted. So she doesn't really do them until she discovers ketamine. Okay, and now I'm in locust, which my feet back there, they're up in the air. So at this point, 
Marcia is divorced from the third husband. She's sort of living off her trust fund, but she's also got all these books being published and she's got this lecture circuit and she's able to give speeches and talks all around the country. And she ends up in Washington State and she's got this friend there that is like, you know, have you ever tried ketamine? And Marcia's like, nah, and the drugs don't really work for me. And this woman's like, no, but seriously, you gotta try it. And Marcia's like, all right, fine, you know. And they shoot her up. And ketamine at this point is fairly new. I think it's first synthesized in the 1960s. But at this point, which is the mid-1970s, it's starting to be used. It's uh, anesthetic is what it's being used for. But if you sort of like what a doctor would say is underdose and you don't fully go under, you can have this sort of hallucinogenic out-of-body experience. And Marcia takes it and she's like, oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Where have you been all my life? So while she's out in Washington, she discovers ketamine, but she also meets this guy named Howard Sonny Altunian, and he is about to become husband number four. And he is local there to Washington. He is about maybe 11, 12 years younger than her, something like that. And he's an anesthetist, which is handy when you've just discovered a love of ketamine. She moves out west and moves in with him. He quits his job at the hospital and they just live off of her trust fund and do ketamine all the time and record, tape record themselves having these trips and explaining what they're going through. And they write this book called Journey to the Bright World. And when they finished writing the book, it seems like Sunny is kind of like, okay, and now we back off of this, right? And Marcia is like, no. We are full in. She has started to call ketamine the goddess, and she has decided that her calling in life is that she is the high priestess of the goddess ketamine. Okay, this is hand and foot pose, or padahastasana. I don't know. She's been doing a ton of ketamine. It seems like Sunny has backed off a little bit, but she has been apparently dosing twice a day, every day, for 14 hours months. And one night, Sonny goes to the movies, and he comes back home, and she's gone. She's just disappeared. And she's, it's winter, but all of her, her coats and everything, all of her warm clothes are there. And they don't know where she is. She's a missing persons case for two years. In 1981, they find her body. Somebody is clearing land or something, and they find part of a skull. And by dental records, they're able to see that it is, in fact, her. They later find some other bones. There's like a leg and there's some stuff, but it's all sort of scattered around. It's not really in one place. So what happened to Marcia Moore? So they don't really know. As is usually the case, the spouse is the first one that gets looked at and she's a millionaire heiress and he's now unemployed because he quit his job to go do ketamine. Some of her friends say, oh, the marriage was on its way out, which like, frankly, looking at her track record, it probably was. He only has money if she's alive because after her death, all of that money in the trust goes to her kids. What the police think is that probably it was either an overdose or natural causes. Sunny and at least one, if not two of her kids, think that it was suicide. There's also the possibility that she went out and she had a heart attack or something like that. Like, ketamine use like that is really, really hard on your heart specifically and your body. So those are sort of the, the standard options. Um, oh, and then of course, also there's the possibility that she was murdered by a coven of witches. And now here I am, Savasana corpse pose, which really just means laying on the ground and has an unfortunate name when you're talking about being murdered by a witch coven. Okay, so this is a real theory that was put forth, and it was put forth by her brother, the Green Beret. Like, the day after her body was found, when they said that they only found the skull, he was like, uh, witch coven. He says that she told him a couple of years before that there was this cult of witches that was trying to murder her and that she was sure one day they would manage it. And he even went 
to the coroner and was like, how was the head severed? Was it a clean sever? Was it, you know, a... and the coroner's like, I don't know. I had half a jaw and a leg. But he thinks that because she was involved with the occult and she was with all these people who were in these sort of like fringe religious groups and all of this new age stuff that somebody carried out a ritual on her. I don't know. I don't think we're ever gonna know exactly what happened to Marcia Moore. Three, two, one. Nope. <laughs> now in theory, I can put my hands up over my head right now. I'm not there. But if I do what this magazine says and do these exercises for 10 minutes a day, every day for six months, maybe I'll be able to. Thank you so much for joining me. I will put up pictures of Marcia Moore on my Facebook and Instagram, so check those out. Click like and subscribe here, and if you want additional fabulous content, you can subscribe at my Patreon. Um, maybe I'll put up myself doing some more yoga poses. Well, that's an awfully lot of my hind end, isn't it?